Yep, and welcome back, guys, to another episode of the Always Bent Podcast. We're here for episode five with very special guest today, Mr. Chris Fullove from Rip Charts. And hey we're awesome. We appreciate you taking the time to come chat with us, and we're excited to, to think, learn more. So Chris and I have uh, have been talking for a long time. I I don't know, actually, like the initial, how we initially like first connected, but I just remember like you were like, you're the top user on Rip Charts right now. Or like, <laughs> I never got a star from you, but <laughs> mm-hmm. I definitely think I was the top user or something at one point. And that's kind of how we connected. And you're like, you know, we should do something. And the timing just wasn't right then. But uh, I we've connected ever, you know, we've stayed in touch ever since. And uh, basically, that's my introduction about Chris. But if, if you want to add anything, Chris, or to yeah. the... No, just, you know, you, you were one of just like our power users early on. I think we were getting feedback from you. You were all, you were like in the paper in Ocean City about uh-huh. the first angler to bring a tuna in for the year. And uh, I think you even gave us a little bit of props for yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, just... I actually, it's funny that you brought that up because I actually just brought, like took a couple screenshots, went through like past pictures that I have. Cause I remember like the trips associated with the pictures and like, that was one of the trips that, that one of the eddies that I, I, I would not have caught that fish without rip charts. I mean, like every other app out there was not accurate. It rip charts was the only one that provided the imagery that day. Otherwise we would have been at the dock. We would have not have went. And we'll put some of those screenshots yeah. in yeah. down in the corner. Yeah. I can do that afterwards, but uh, he was showing me, no. it was really neat. To but, see how so, you use yeah. it. So we wanted to ju- great. You know, Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, no, we, uh, you know, we usually are collaborating in early season because hitting that first eddy, getting the first first tuna, it's, I'm, I get excited about it. And I'm, I'm over here in Texas. You know, we don't get quite the water the way that you do. So right. it's, it's, it's exciting to see it kind of develop and then to target and then just to kind of hear your feedback uh, has been great and exciting just to, Kind of to be a, a spectator of it. I, I actually like it's my one of my favorite things about tuna fishing is the whole you know, in, in any pelagic you know, marlin, my, anything you're targeting offshore, it's just like how water oriented they are and how you know everything, even the slightest little break or difference or change like holds. And, and even we've learned inshore, I mean, anywhere, like if there's a change somewhere, there's a reason why there's a change there, and like fish it you know yeah we usually find fish where where those are so. but like that's what rip charts is awesome for is it's it's it finding rips and and i've had a lot of success using your app a lot of the features that you guys and we'll go over all this stuff so i, I kind of want to start like at the yeah, top well, here i was gonna say if you want to just you know for anyone that isn't familiar with rip charts or what it is if you want to give like that's a brief a good... rundown of um you know what it's used for and who uses yeah. it most and uh you know so obviously on. we do but <laughs> uh, yeah no happy to so rip charts is a is a service that uh, aggregates a lot of different data sets of the ocean we're, we're collecting uh altimetry currents sea temps chlorophyll true color um and we got some bottom maps and so it's really and and from our perspective we do a lot of heavy lifting to do that we're downloading about a terabyte of data per day and now we're processing that and we're refining that and we are publishing that so a user can access let's say a heavy data set that we've simplified Mm -hmm. in a matter of let's say seconds via let's say our mobile app or whatnot we've also built tools that will kind of help you refine or customize sea temps um, you can overlay if you want to see a combination of different data sets. Um, we really try to put a lot of tool sets in your hands to really quickly make an assessment. So let's say, for example, we might see some good sea temp, an eddy offshore. And you're like, well, is that eddy coming across the canyon? Well, you can flip on a bathymetry or you can overlay a chlorophyll and you can quickly assess um, kind of from multiple dimensions if um uh, water conditions are favorable and so uh, that's what rip charts was built on was just kind of the premise of um, collecting data um making a, an app to easily assess and, and then make make decisions and, and be successful right it's we spend a lot of time we spend a lot of money targeting offshore fish we're trying to help ensure that that effort is as successful as we can make it mm-hmm. because um 
it's just it's it's not cheap and no. it's time consuming so we want to maximize that it's a long that. way and it's it you know it's a it's a long run it's it, even your fishery i mean you guys are running a long way down where you guys are so yeah gotta... so we we fish out of, out of houston texas and um you know our shelf is very large so we may run 60 70 miles just to get deeper than 300 feet mm -hmm. so if we're wanting to target a tuna or billfish we're usually overnighting running 100 miles um it's a big big commitment to run that far now is it like the same as the mid-atlantic are you guys looking for obviously as a you know changes in, in and when are, when are the changes most prevalent i guess and then what are you guys looking for the same thing we are or is there differences down there it's it's different but there are some similarities we drive our decisions more on the chlorophyll. If we're not mm -hmm. blue water, um, it's it's probably not. Now that's there's a few exceptions that you know you, we can get a black fin tuna, which you guys don't have. We get those inshore. We get them in 300 feet of water. But more like yellowfin, um, marlin, we're wanting to look at blue water. That's not to say that we have been successful with let's say like a winter time. Right. Um, What's it called? Eddie, like the midnight lumps down there or something. Midnight lump, that's off of Venice, uh, Louisiana. Um, that's more just kind of a bottom structure. Okay. Um, I know it's like an inshore wintertime fishery, isn't it, like in there? Yeah. That's probably more of a structure game, a little more than, let's say, a, a water sea canyon. Or... But that's not to say, you know, we have the loop current, and it'll spin off an eddy, and uh, you'll watch it. And it's you'll watch it from maybe 100 miles out. As that eddy is drifting into, into, the, into the shell, you'll know it's about to fire because right. that the um it's it's got warm water it's got bait it's usually got blue water associated mm. with that warm water and as it collides with the shell you kind of have two things happening here and this will happen for you guys you've got bait and pelagics associated with that eddy that's pushing in your bottom structures are also naturally going to collect and aggregate its own bait i mean structure will will uh, facilitate a chain of life in itself and right. so when you have kind of a an open water chain of life colliding with a structural chain of life you kind of get an explosion right you get all of a sudden those pelagics that are on that eddy now maybe have a new food source that they're feeding right. on so, um as that eddy maybe drifts across the shelf it may pick up some of that bait and, and take it with it it could also drop back some of those pelagics that may want to reside around that structure mm -hmm. so interesting strategy here and we've seen this in australia a lot is uh, we'll have an eddy collide on the shelf and even after that eddy maybe dissipates or fades or moves on it will still have pelagics resident on that structure for a while so right. you have to go uh, we it have maybe a, a couple days later and be successful very very similar here like uh, the hudson canyon and the washington canyon in the summertime we'll have like a really nice piece of blue water eddy roll through the washington and you'll have, you know, the water will be gone and you'll go there the next day. It's green and, and in the 60s and the day before it was in the upper 70s, mid 70s and blue. And the tunas are still loaded up. The whales are still loaded up. They Once that water rolls through, generally speaking, like those t tunas in our area, if the water temperature is above and like, you know, the mid upper 60s, like they're going to hang. They hang on that structure even when the water goes through. You know, I don't, I don't know about other species, but I know for a fact, like tunas definitely will hang around, you know, if the water's, as long as it's not cold, you know, the water, water's warm enough for them to be there. Well, as long as it's comfortable and they've got food to eat, why would they leave? So. Right, there's no reason. So, um, next, so I want to also, so we got into how you got into it. Um, so what do you, so how do we fish these edges? We're just talking, we're just talking about like finding these. How, how do you see success in, in people fishing these? And I can always go over how, you know, my own successes as well, but I'd like to hear from you, you, you know, because you have a lot more audience of people than we do. Yeah, so typically it kind of starts out, I'm going to say kind of with some pre-planning, right? Mm -hmm. It's not really kind of wake up that morning, look at rip charts and, and know where to go. You may, and people that are real experienced, maybe they can be that instantaneous Oftentimes we're looking at it days, maybe a week in advance and say, Hey, there's some water there. Mm -hmm. It looks favorable. Um, as it starts to drift in, you start paying attention to it. Right. And so let's say it gets within your range. Um, then you want to kind of start aligning different data sets. Is that, let's, let's say we got a, an SST eddy. 
and we'll show an eddy here for, for maybe folks who are new to it mm -hmm. in just a minute. But we'll say you got an eddy. You might also want to say, well, does that eddy have blue water associated with it? Yes or no. Sometimes you'll have an, a, an, a sea temp edge that doesn't quite align with the blue water edge. Mm -hmm. That can be still be good, but what it tells you now is there might be two opportunities there. Those fish may be on, this, on the temp that they like, or they might be maybe a little bit further back on the blue water, right? So it's good to have context of is that sea temp associated with blue, blue water or is it not? Right. Is the sea temp crossing a structure like a canyon mm -hmm. or a lump or, or something else? Is it not? Anytime you can kind of stack multiple factors into your favor, it'll say the temperature's right, the color's right, the structure's right. Um, our Australian customers like to look at the current a lot. They have a really strong EAC. Mm -hmm. um, they usually like to not target the strong water. The EAC is like water. our Gulf Stream, everyone, sorry. Like yeah. the Gulf Stream, correct. Um, so they'll actually look for a current uh, variable or a slack current a lot of times that's right next to a strong current. So it kind of starts with the planning of what water is out there, what other factors are um, going to give me my best chance. And so then it's a matter of kind of targeting that water. You know, you can get lat long positions off of a, off the rip charts map. You can actually download the map and take it on your mobile app offline we have kind of an offline version so you can literally and i just keep my phone in my pocket when i'm offshore Me too. wake it up where am, I, where am i at um you can do a quick measurement and a bearing it's pretty simple to, to, to target water i mean way. early season i feel like that's like if you're not keeping your rip charts app open when you're going fishing or and downloading the map prior to going you're missing out on a lot of valuable data while you're out there i mean a lot of times i'll just put the i'll use my rip chart app to navigate me out there. I'll be like, all right, my bearing's 150 the whole way out here. You know, like I know mm -hmm. I got to go 150 degrees the entire way and I'm going to hit the water. So yeah, a lot of times that's how I use rip charts. I mean, a lot of other ways as well, but. I was just going to say, I, the last trip we took, I remember I seeing you like using it, trying to find that rip yeah. that we yeah. <coughs> ended up what, finding. Yeah, I mean, which was, I think we beat the fish to it. That's a testament to rip charts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's exactly how we use it. I mean, it's, it, once, once you get on the water, you know bearing and distance you you know or at least just the bearing you'll you know you know when you're hit it normally and that's the thing when you are on the water especially here in the gulf i suspect you guys are maybe similar you'll see a water change when you get to that warm water barrier or the blue water blue water obviously here we get like a sargassum weed you'll see almost a water texture change you can uh -huh. kind of notice it when you get close to that sea temp water or that change in the sea temp um so that's kind of how you know you you've kind of gotten there um, and I'll give an example. You said when you save the map, you know, sometimes you got to get creative, man, we didn't hit fish on that edge. Um, what do we do? Well, I've got a map with me and we actually had a similar experience here in the Gulf. Interestingly, and I think you guys encountered this too, is after the summer goes by, all the water normalizes. It's all hot. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't have yeah, everything blends. Yeah. And, yeah. And so it get, you have to get a little more creative. Well, we actually, earlier. interestingly, had a cold water bubble out offshore. I, it kind of just rolled in, hung around all summer, and we knew it was there, and we were running offshore, and we see a weed line on it. And, well, let's control that weed line. And if we didn't know the, the size or order of magnitude of that bubble, we may have fished the weed line a little bit and then kept on going. But since we actually knew there was a little larger mass of water there, we tried to troll it a little longer. And we actually ended up having just an epic mahi-mahi bite fishing the edge wow. of this cold water bubble. So. All that to say is having that data in hand, you can make a field decision. Well, it didn't do what same I thought it was going to do. Happened but with my uh, same kind of story uh, a couple years ago. We, me and my buddy Brendan, went out in uh, the end of April, and um, we had uh, like we, I got a decent shot the night before from rip charts. Like if nobody had any shots, it was pretty cloudy, and um, but I pieced it together with the overlay. So I used your overlay pieced the shot together, went out, found the water. We literally killed our bluefin. There was, it was only one bluefin then. They, they literally changed the limit, I think, the next day. But anyways, uh, we killed our bluefin, and we're like, all right, what now? Well, I had the map downloaded, and there was a, another break outside that first break that the bluefin were on. And we went out there. It was like another 15 miles east, northeast of it. And went out there and ended up catching yellowfins. Uh, 
which is cool. Like you always have, like you said, you have a something in your back pocket when you're out there. If, if things aren't, you know, transpiring the way that you think they're going to. Yeah. yeah and you have an extra tool too, or an extra right. piece of information you can use to find and target and stay on the fish. Right. And I thought it was interesting, like how we apply this to inshore as well. Like how he said, like a lot of times in Australia, they'll look for like slack current next to moving current. Like we, that's what fish want to be in they want to get out of you yep. they don't want to fight current all day they want to be near it so they can move and you know go wherever they want to go but they want to get out of that you know they, they don't want to be in it all the time so finding those little edges current edges man that's valuable even here mm-hmm. yeah We're, um so yeah so i uh i wanted to go into the next um so what so we're, we've already kind of touched on this but like what have been some of the what are the features capabilities other than like, I mean, I've used overlay a ton, but I'll, I'll want to, another one I wanted to kind of touch on and the importance of it is, is the temperature adjusting your temperatures. Like, I mean, I can't get, I can't tell you how many times I've found like water that you can't see when you don't adjust it um, yeah. with using that adjustment. And, and just, that's one of the features, but I mean, if you want to go into some other stuff you guys have as well, I, I would love to hear it. Yeah, no, the, the, the custom sea temp is probably the most powerful tool on on the app. Um, we may be one of the few providers that, that offer that. Um, and the, the reality of it is the maps show a decent size area to kind of assess kind of the bigger water picture. But if you just got a one to two degree break, mm -hmm. that's important. And so a lot of times these maps may span 15, 20 degrees. And you may see a trained eye might be able to know there's, right. there's a break here, but what you can do is you can kind of exaggerate yes. the temperature changes by constraining the gradient to just a smaller range of temp. And so yes. the, we've got tutorials that are actually built into the app. If you've got the Rip Charts app, you can go view video tutorials. They're really, they're really good. I don't know if um, everybody uses them, but oftentimes when we get questions, we'll redirect folks. Hey, we've got a video tutorial. It showed you how to customize the map. Uh, it's one of the most powerful features. Yeah, I was going to say, Jeff just showed me the app this past winter when we were got that bluefin bite here. And uh, I figured it out super easy using the tutorial right in the app. Mm -hmm. And uh, and Jeff helped me too, but it did make a huge, because we were looking for like, you know, anywhere from 48 to 52 degrees was like the most variant we had that time of year where we're inshore where they were biting. Right. So we needed to make, you know, the parameters a lot smaller, basically 48 to 52, because that's all we really cared about. And like you said, it just made it. And also like what I love about that feature more. is like it really allows you to see where the water is coming from. Um, so sometimes you even take that gradient, you may make it a couple degrees. Well, you'll see that that water's coming from inshore you know, an upwelling from inshore, it's not coming from offshore. And it's like, okay, I probably want to stay away from that water that's moving offshore versus pushing inshore. So I, I find it very valuable just finding where water is coming from and where it's going, where it's attached, you know, where the main boundary is of it. Um, so that a, a, a example is a, a couple of years ago, there was a really good bite all in the poor man's for, for about a week. And there was like a little slice of water that had moved in over the edge overnight to about 70 fathoms. And I looked at the rip charts the night before and you could see it clear as day. And, all, you know, all the boats in the morning flying out to the canyon. And I stayed inshore in 70 fathoms. And me and my buddy Josh, it was just him and I on the boat. We limited out. We caught we were catching elephants for fun um, at that point. And I was calling people like, get inshore like the bite is inshore. And it was, they were on a little tiny slice of water that, I mean, it was probably a mile wide that maybe even, a, maybe not even a mile wide, but it was definitely clear, bluer water you could see with your eye. And it was a clear one to two degree break. But I mean, an untrained eye or somebody that looked at a rip, uh, you know, a, another application that wasn't yours, that doesn't have that gradient um, would have never been able to see that, you know, and, and they didn't, you know, they went way past, I had some of the best captains coming up to me at the end of the day. And this is what I really went when I really didn't know what I was doing. 
they were like, what did you do today? Did you drive to North Carolina? And I'm like, no. <laughs> it's right here. The fish are right here, you know? We have a picture of that one, too, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. I have pictures of it. I didn't include that in there. But I can send it to you before yeah. for, the, for yeah. purposes. Yeah, it's so cool. I, yeah, I have a picture of the, uh, the the rip and a picture of the, the day. So Yeah, well, some of these stories I'm hearing for the first time, too. So <laughs> it's pretty awesome. Yeah. It, I mean, I've I so many times I've used this application to... To, to get on fish and people, I mean, even last year, I mean, there was, you know, the, the, the fish were not, they were, they weren't moving very much, but the water was, they were moving with the water and the water was slowly edging in, you know, over the hundred line in the 70, 60 fathoms. And like those, everybody was struggling last year and I was fishing that edge. I stayed on that edge and we just kept, I mean, I knock on wood, we, we did very, very well last year and, and I'm, fortunate enough to lucky enough I guess to stay on the fish but also some of that luck has to be with being able to see where the water is moving and where it's going and and being ahead of it because you have to you, you know you're you're always going to be a step behind and and that's one thing I've learned like I can never figure out exactly what the water is going to do but you can get a general idea of what it what it looks like well, it's going to do especially with these tools with your app right. here, it's really making it easier, it seems like. It, I mean, it really is. I mean, I I don't know if you want to touch on any. I, I use the altimetry. I mean, they have altimetry as well, and then um, bathymetry. So, I mean, they – and the and and the uh, well, accuracy, uh, I mean, I, I feel is, is – is I was going to ask about the chlorophyll, too. Isn't there, a, like, an overlay or something to find the chlorophyll? Well, you can there? overlay so a lot of times, and Chris can, you know – answer this as well but you you can overlay your chlorophyll with your sst so you can see you know okay is this water boundary blue or green here and you that's know? that's what i was going to ask so the chlorophyll is mostly just the color making chlorophyll it is just or... the just the color of the water you know and okay. that's, that's a popular tactic is to load kind of let's say a sea temp as your base map um adjust your temp sliders to get kind of in the zone you're looking for and then for, for us, oftentimes we're saying, well, what does my water color look like? And so what we'll do is we'll overlay a chlorophyll on top of that sea temp to see do the temperature breaks align with a color break. And, and you can we've got a hide button. You can toggle it off on, off on, and you can kind of investigate um, when and where or if there's, there's alignment there. So it's a, it's a popular tactic to kind of target warm and blue water. Mm -hmm. And like I... I... I love talking about eddies. Like one of the things I've noticed from targeting these early season ones, especially is like, I've always, we have success. A lot of times we have success with the eddies that come from the straight East rather than the South. You know, we'll have different fish, generally speaking, you know, when we have an eddy from the South, we have a lot more, it seems like we have a lot more Mahi Marlin, you know, blue Marlin around versus an eddy that comes from the East, which generally speaking holds more tuna. Um, and I just find that interesting. I, I and I don't know. Oh, he's yes. Oh, sure. Okay. I was gonna say, and I don't know like why or how or you know. I w I would just love to tag one of these fish and just see where they go and what yeah. they're doing every month. And I know there's people out there that have there's some of that data, but you know, I would just love to dive more into that data and just see where these fish are going. Yeah, just to give it a, a uh, little example of an eddy for those who may not be familiar this is kind of what we call an eddy that kind of peels off sometimes people will call them a filament and you can see this one and just to give some context this is kind of your gulf stream here mm -hmm. and uh, the way these eddies will happen is you'll kind of have current let's say you got two currents kind of or you got a current going but one of them starts to kind of slow down like on the edges when you have kind of a stronger current that's uh adjacent to a slower current you'll get a peel off of that eddy so what happens is this this guy was probably this edge here was probably associated with that gulf stream main mm -hmm. current maybe days ago or even you know miles ago way back here gradually those currents kind of had a differential and it will peel off that warm water well when it does that this is what we call an eddy and it's bringing bait is bringing the pelagics along with it and what that does is as this maybe drifts into your into your shelf it's bringing all of those good that great fish with it mm -hmm. and so um usually you like to kind of target these edges um or you know let's say i don't this is just a screenshot but you know or if you had kind of a, a canyon or a structure under here you'd want to align with kind of a bottom structure plus 
plus the, we'll say a water structure. Right. That's what I like yeah. to look for. And, and this is like that's your awesome. typical warm ring eddy that we see in the mid Atlantic. Um, looks like probably recently is this, it's gotta be sometime recently, wasn't it? This, this was a couple of years ago. I think it was just a neat looking shot. Oh, it's a good shot. It shows a lot of detail. And that's another thing I wanted to touch is like a lot of times that like people will ask me like, Oh, you know, I never get any shots. Well, if you're not getting shots, it's because there's cloud cover. And I try to tell people that and explain that, you know, if rip charts is not getting the shot, neither is any other provider. And it kind of segues into our next question. Like what differentiates you from the rest of the applications out there, the rest of the services out there? You know, I think we, we try to give a full court press on really all of the, the data sets that are available. Um, you know, we got a couple different C temps or C temp satellites, you know, and I'll go into kind of some differences of the satellite technologies. Um, we try to bring in all the chlorophyll satellites, all the C temp satellites, rather than kind of cherry pick maybe a, a one or two or what we maybe feel is the best. We just mm -hmm. bring it all in. Um, yeah, that's and awesome. that, and that kind of goes into kind of the, the C temp satellites, you know, um, there's different technologies of satellites. The ones that we like the most, that I like the most, and that I know Jeff likes the most, this is one of them. It's what they call a low earth, um, orbiting satellite, yeah. usually 250 kilometers, um, in the sky, which is very low earth, low orbit. And, um, uh, it's got a higher resolution, um, it only you only get about two passes per day unfortunately because it's it's kind of looping around the earth sometimes you don't get a complete shot it's you get kind of a sliver off to the side you don't get complete coverage but when you do get a good shot it's high resolution mm -hmm. yeah the um, detail is awesome i like the ones i like the ones that have the cloud interference actually it's it's gritty it's raw but it removes all processing and, and removal from it but, you know, Jeff, you and I know with the trained eye, these, these little blips here, those are just small little clouds. Mm -hmm. You know, they're not, uh, it's not a difference, not a cartoon in, image, right. but, but it's a raw image and I can get a lot out and, of it. And that's, that's what I try to tell people. It's like, you know, you gotta, you gotta look when it says an individual scan versus cloud interference, you gotta take those both shots. And sometimes if you're confused at what you're looking at, overlay them both. And then you can actually see like what's cloud, what's not, but the individual scan is going to show you, you know, with, without, with, with the cloud interference, it's going to show you everything. So yeah, the cloud I'm, interference is going to try to knock the clouds out, but you know, your best shots are always going to be your individual scans, in my opinion. Um, yeah, no, I agree. That I, I see. I like, I like to take the errors and then the grittiness along with it. A trained eye can kind of, can, can kind of get, um, can sort it out pretty quick. There is a learning curve a little bit, so I could understand a new user that may want to shy away from something with cloud interference. Um, sometimes the cloud removal um, is a little aggressive, and and so it's a it's a safer, but it's it removes a little bigger of a bite sometimes. So and it's I just looking at both. so and I just think them. like with these other providers, you just got to beware of a lot of them we'll take this shot and you'll yeah, I'll hear people say, Oh, well, such and such got a great shot. And I'll be like, well, it's a composite shot. That means that shot's been blended together with 10 other shots that are not up to date. That is yeah. not going to show you where the water is right now. That's going to show you where the water is generally for the last six hours. Whereas the last, this one's an that's, live that's live shot. real time. When it says, when rip chart says 10 57 PM, that shots at 10 57 PM. That's where the water is. And it's yep. invaluable. I mean, a lot of times you can, if you go off other stuff, you can, you can miss the water by 10, 15, 20 miles. Cause you, you and I both know Chris, like the, I mean, the water doesn't move as fast as your current, but the water moves up here and you can miss the water very easily if it's, if it's ripping. Yeah. And we, and we have, we have composites too, but they, they just have their place. You got to right. recognize, I mean, some people love just get a, a pretty picture and a complete picture, and I, and I like that too. Um, when it says individual scan, it, though. <laughs> yeah, but if you if you're looking at a composite, you will get a more full picture. But you got to recognize we're we're assembling fragments from the last day or the last three days to try and at least give you an idea of well, is warm water across the shelf or is it not? I mean, right. you can get kind of a an order of magnitude that way. 
Uh, same thing with the, the, the cloud free blends. I mean, it's going to give you an order of magnitude of if you got warm water on the shelf, is it not, you know, kind of generally speaking, it's hard to go target a specific edge there just because right. it's a different, different technology. Yeah. I, I was going to say, if you're, if you're looking to target a specific edge, which is very imperative early in the year for us, because it's only one edge, you know, you probably want to shy away from composite shots. You know, if you're, if you know the water's there in the area and you know, people have been catching fish and you just want to kind of see what's going on, the general trend, then that, then the composite may be more, you know, your style, but, but either way, you, that's the cool thing about rip charts. They have it all. I mean, so if you're seeing data somewhere else, chances are rip charts has it, um, in my, you know, in my experience. So, yeah, I mean, I, I also, I, and also before we, you know, a any other questions that you can think of that you have? Well, I was just going to say, I, I did notice, like you were saying, too, there's a lot of pop-ups to offer you help throughout the way. And, like, you can choose to turn them off if you're someone like Jeff, like an expert. Mm -hmm. But I purposely click show me again because I'm still getting familiar and learning right. how to use the app. And I just know that was just something I noticed that was cool, whether it's the tools or the overlays, it kind of shows you. I, I just remember there's a couple different times a screen yeah. pops up and it's like, do yeah. you need help? Yeah. If not, turn mm -hmm. this off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's a cool feature. It helped me a couple of times. Yeah. I mean, I, I honestly, I, f I feel like the usability is, is, is it's very user friendly. And, and once you get the hang of it, I mean, you, you know, you're going to have to look, use your common sense to look at a, uh, a radar image if there's cloud cover you know you're probably not going to get a shot a good shot you know but if it's a nice day and you, you don't see a lot of cloud cover you know chances are there's going to be a good shot up and 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 that that and if you're not going fishing now like i tell like look at the app on a you know not a weekly you know a couple times a week or whenever you have a, a minute just see if there's any new shots see what's going on see what the you know the general trend is out there because a lot of times what i've noticed is like even though it's you know the water's 50 degrees right now the eddies that are spinning off it still generally do the same thing now they do later in the season um at least in our area so it's it's kind of good to follow the trend and see what's going on in my in my opinion i, th I think that I've, it's led to me catching a lot more fish just just following you know, the Gulf Stream and, and what and what it's doing and, and, you know, what's going on to our south. Are there any fish to our north? You know, like, you know, where are they catching fish to the north? What's that? Where are they? You know, what's the water look like up there? That water is going to be moving our direction because, you know, everything travels off the Gulf Stream back, gets absorbed to the south. So, you know, you just follow those general trends. There's things, there's, there's pieces that you can put together and, and really put, you know, take a puzzle and make it almost complete before you go out there to, to try to, to try to catch a fish. So I, I, I just, uh, and, and again, like I, thank you so much for doing this. I mean, Chris, you've been a invaluable resource for me. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I've learned a lot. And I was going to say, did you have any other, like, oh, I pictures wanted to, or charts? I have a, cause I have a couple I wanted to share too with everybody, you know, well, it, as well. And I, I don't know how you wanted to do that, but I mean, we, yeah, I was going to say, I might have to put those in after the fact, yeah, which is but, fine. Um, yeah. or at the end here. But did you have anything else you wanted to share, like other shots like that or charts or anything? Yeah, you can kind of walk through some and just kind of reiterate some of the things we, we discussed. Yeah, and just then, to like, touch you know on... what, Chris? Like, there's a really good shot recently in the Mid Atlantic uh, within the last couple of days. Maybe just pull that up and like show sure. show the show everybody like you know what I would do you know when I analyze a shot and. Yeah, there we go. Like, yeah, some cool stuff like this because there's a lot of people. So that... right away, I always put the bathymetry up over here so I know what I'm looking at and where I'm looking right away. So I put my bathymetry up, see where – so you got – okay, I got Is no water really – Yes. I mean, that's basically what I recommend because then you know what you're looking at. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, you... this, is, this is a great story but a sad story. It's, it's, <laughs> it's a great really... It's a great story but a sad story. So we got a tiny you know... little filament of water – pushing up in the, or maybe even being pulled out from the Washington. But I mean, it, yeah. right now that would tell me like, uh, keep, keep doing your boat work, everybody. <laughs> yeah, no. So yeah, I agree. Turning on your bathy, you, you get to see the Canyon. Do you know how far a Canyon run is? You right. don't need to measure anything. It's, it's very quick. Right. And then you see your depths. So, you know, like a thousand fathoms, 6,000 feet, you know how far you're going. So you're generally, I'm generally speaking, looking for water within a thousand fathoms this time of year um to to, tar to target because kind of when you get outside of a thousand fathoms i mean there is some structure but that's really where the continental slope ends and the the, sh the shelf ends there 
Yeah. Is there any this of those other layers you use or tools you use you want to show us? That would be quick? a really cool feature. I mean, just to use the, so if, let's, let's picture over the water, guys. Everybody picture the water's blended right now, and this is the summertime. And you see this little rip right here, you know, outside the Washington, but you want to get a better eye on it. You know, you could go right to your, um, what's it called? The uh, overlays. I'm sorry, Chris. Go to your overlays and the, the adjust your temperature. What I would do with this is I get a better look at this, that little strain of water right there. Cause that, that's what I would be immediately eyeing in this image is if I had to fish tomorrow, that's, that's where I would go, you know, probably, you know, zoom in on the, you're looking at this little guy yeah, right that little there. filament of water yeah. coming off that eddy. That's, that's extremely interesting. If it was a bigger piece of water, I yeah. would think it would be worth chasing down pretty good. He's, right. You can take, he probably existed back here on one of these other masses, mm -hmm. just got separated, and now he's drifting. Is there a fish or two in there? There might be. Yeah, um, I, I would I would bet my life that there's probably some bluefin there, but, I mean, yeah. you know, they're how eager they are to eat her, you know, is be, is probably another story. Yeah. I'm, but no I'm matter where But, like, are, if you watch when he starts adjusting this, guys, tools. like, watch when he starts adjusting this, how much more this becomes clear and evident, like, where exactly to fish. Not like, oh, let's just go to this area. Let's go to the 800 square of 500 fathoms. No, let's go exactly but where the water is, you know. Or, you know. Even if you're not in Ocean City, this is the same pretty much no matter what body of water. Yeah, you're if you're using. from Cape May or from Virginia Beach, this is the same body of water you're going to be chasing. Yeah. But I mean, that really the starts to look at that. Now you really start to see fish. where is that? Look, now we can see where the filament actually is coming from. Like you can actually see the filament all the way. And he adjusted even more. You'll be able to. But like you can see that filament all the way out to the to the Gulf Stream. I mean, that shows you exactly where that water came from. You could follow that rip the entire way. Until your heart desired, you could troll that whole rip. And what do you adjust in here? The the temperature. Uh -huh. Okay. Yep. But yeah, these are these are kind of high and low oh, temperature see. sliders. So see that? See how that goes all the way out there, Taylor? Yeah, like here, that rip. Look, look. Yeah. There you go. Here. You can see how that rip goes all the way out. I mean, you can see how that. And here's where exactly that water came from. I mean, it's still cold. You know, it's chilly, but it's. I, I would I would say there's giant bluefin definitely using that water right now, you know. Yeah, you'd have to you have to make sure you got a good shot right before you run because that's that's a um, if he moved you had a, a couple of days of clouds and it would move you'd have to you'd have to hunt for it or you'd have to have a good shot. But um, that's you know that's kind of what you what you look for is right little, little filaments of water they came off the Gulf Stream. It's it's got fish or it, it had fish at one point in it. Um, it's probably going to dissipate in the next probably we'll say week into yeah you know not much but it's going to blend all blend easy. together you know it, that's not a lot of water. So as we get closer and closer to our fishing season, there will just be more and more of these eddies and filaments yeah. and, and you'll start to coming get, off of that. Yeah, you'll start to get more of a wind is everything. Um, so based off of our wind direction or what our what, what kind of winds we're getting is what the water's going to do. Like if we're getting southwest winds, you're going to see what the Gulf Stream's doing now. The Gulf Stream's sweeping off shore. You know, when you, you get that Gulf Stream pulling offshore like that, every, it's going to suck everything associated with it out, which in my opinion slows up fishing. But like when you get some east winds, some northeast winds, like that Gulf Stream gets pushed back up, you know, maybe up into here where this is now, then you start to see like some really fishable water that, in my opinion, holds more fish. Um, yeah, that's awesome. But yeah, it's, it's, awesome. It, it's uh, it, it, I could go on forever with this stuff. I love it. I mean, but this is a beautiful shot. I mean, you're not going to get, and in my opinion, you're not going to get, based off of our current technology, you're not going to get much better than this as far as detail. I mean, you can go... I mean, he could zo you could zoom in even further and really get right on that rip. I mean, you could see where the where the water is getting pushed. If there's structure there, if the water if the structure is affecting the way it's pushing the water, you can see how that water is getting pushed up onto that shelf, mm -hmm. into that bathymetry curve right there, almost to the big eye hole right there, and kind of hitting the shelf and then starting to swirl. You know, yeah, so yeah, it, wow. it it really shows you the detail of like what exactly that water is doing there which is a really, really cool. And that's the currents. The currents on rip charts too are super accurate. I love the, you know, using the currents as well. It, 
it'll even show you a little little current slacks you know like oh mm -hmm. this there's no current here um yeah. but yeah i mean and you, you know then the purple like pushing up to this from the north to south you can really see how the the labrador current's starting to put you know this time of year it's still pretty strong and start still affecting that the gulf stream tremendously you know it'll be it'll be less and less as the year progresses we'll get less of that gulf stream pushing the or the labrador current pushing to the south yeah i have kind of a or go ahead I was asked, Jeff, what are your thoughts on this little piece of water here? I, that was that piece of water that I, me and Taylor went out to a couple of weeks ago. It was actually well to the north of that. Um, it was it was actually, when we fished it, it was actually the Gulf Stream. The Gulf Stream was still attached to it 100%. Um, and it, yeah, it was it broke, insanely, it yeah, and it was insanely mm -hmm. rough. And, I mean, it, it, it felt like the Gulf Stream. Like, you went from three to four foot seas to seven foot seas. I mean, I'm, it's holding fish. There's no doubt in my mind that that's got fish in it. Um, when we were there, the life, the, the mammals were there, the life was there, but we didn't mark, we marked bait. We didn't mark any tunas, but I, like I said, that, that Eddie had only been there for maybe a day or two when I got to it. So a lot of times I don't have as much success when they're not, they haven't sat there for a little bit of and time. And how long do you guys think like that particular Eddie right there will last? Um, that's been there for a couple of weeks. I mean, that's a bigger piece of water and it's, it's already, it's still, it's still spinning and it's, it's not attached to the Gulf stream. I, it'll probably, it'll probably sit there for a little longer, but it's very close to getting absorbed. Cause I mean, pretty much it's running out of room right now to where to go. You know, it doesn't have really much room to go. It's not going to go much further West towards land, you know? So, I mean, it, it, that, <laughs> If he collides into the shelf, he'll probably dissipate pretty quick. Yeah, yeah. If he if it stays offshore like that, it may hang around. It, it's affecting the Gulf Stream. You can see how it's pulling filaments still off the Gulf Stream right now. That yeah, right there. Yep. So you can see how that that's still got a pretty mm -hmm. strong spin to it. Yeah. So there's, you, and that's the thing that you'll see in this area. You'll just have kind of flaring off eddy after eddy over time, and you just kind of word of kind very of, natural. Um, uh, you know, convergence zone where, you know, the, the, after North Carolina, you know, the Gulf stream really gets me starts meandering naturally to the, to the west, uh, to the East. So we get a lot of eddies because of that. When the, when the Gulf stream wants to move left or right, you know, it's going to naturally make eddies. You could probably see it with this image. Yeah. The, you could see how right past Hatteras, how the Gulf stream really starts to sweep offshore. Um, you know, and sometimes, like I said, I was telling you, we'll get the we'll get the Gulf Stream ride straight up that continental shelf. Yeah, that's and awesome. And I've had a lot of success with those eddies. So this yeah. red is Gulf Stream, right? Yeah, yeah, that's a yeah. Gulf Stream right there. But you like to associate it with more so with the edge there because the, the, out right. here is not really the Gulf Stream. Right. And then the white is cloud coverage? Yeah. Uh -huh. okay. Yep. Cool. Yeah, it's so awesome. To... And, I mean, look at the inshore. I mean, right, even go, if you go over... To like Chris, the like mouth of the Chesapeake, like the mouth of the Chesapeake, right there, and like zoom in. I mean, that that right there is a excellent. Like if you're targeting reds or stripe, you know, migratory reds or migratory stripers, like you could use. I mean, and or I wouldn't. Cobia I would right, season. right. I wouldn't use rip chart. Like I wouldn't buy rip charts to Just use inshore. That. Right. But like if you're an inch offshore fisherman and you have this app, like you should be using it if you're going to be targeting oh, wow. reds yeah. or stripers cuz i mean this is where i find these fish they they use they use, it doesn't matter the depth they you know a, a temperature change in a boundary of water is going to hold bait you know and and those boundaries are going to hold bait it doesn't matter if you're in a river or you're in the north folk canyon yeah. it's going to hold bait water boundaries are going to hold bait so i mean look you, see having an idea of where that boundary is it's going to help you and yeah you, and on this particular shot, like you can see all up in the in the chest. Oh yeah, and if, you, and if you did the color like what we were just talking about, adjusted the temperature. I mean, you could really find out like what's what the sun's heating and where like the ocean current is and and all of that. I mean, it's pretty cool. Yeah, that, it is awesome, man. It's it's really neat. So I mean, I I, I think the only thing I, I want to show everybody before before we signed off, but I mean, you're just gonna add the pictures in. Yeah, or or yeah. I can pull them up too. Either way, um, I was also gonna say like, this look one. at that. You can see like where the top, like that yeah. currents. Like I mean that that's an edge, right? You sh you know that there's gonna be a probably bluefin on that edge. I mean honestly, yeah, like over here. Yeah, or, oh yeah, yeah, man. Yeah. That's what I was like that. Yeah, yeah, that's it's and like where go down, awesome Chris? Tool. Can you go down a little bit to the south? 
Like, where does that blue? Where is that blue coming from? Is that blue coming from the Gulf Stream? Because if it is, I know I guarantee you there's blue fin on that break. Yeah, look at that. Looks like it. Look at yeah. that. I mean, it's it's just inshore. The inshore is getting heated up, but I mean that water is coming up from the south. And then I guess that purple will just continue to push north or blend in. Well, that purple's pushing south. Pushing south. Uh -huh. Okay. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. The current areas were wow. Yeah, it's just so cool. All the different. And that's probably a lot of coastal that. heating associated with the sun that we're seeing. But it's also a lot of times you'll see that current start to leak off the Gulf Stream out of North Carolina and to the south, and it comes directly up to yeah, the north you know right, down right there and it right. sort of comes in, straight coming north and there. yeah like, man that is awesome and i was just gonna say i was just curious how many years have you been collecting data for now again or i was about so we've been we started about 16 years ago wow okay and i was just curious like is there any trends or like something wild you guys have noticed over the years with question. something changing or like you know um just, you know, over yeah. the last 16 That's years, have you noticed like, oh, the Gulf Stream is doing this a little bit? Is it different, warmer? Or... Is it colder? Is it bluer? Is it greener? I mean, anything yeah, like that? Like I don't know if anomalies? we have any grand conclusions in that regard. We have kind of, this is kind of related to your question is we have seen in certain fisheries, certain data sets will, will be a stronger tool. And in, in particular, um, kind of uh, off Queensland, Australia, kind of Northeast Queensland, altimetry for whatever reason is, you'll have an upwelling coming in from far offshore. And when it collides with the shelf, it is like a sledgehammer. And you'll, you'll hear reports going off where people are catching double digit Marlin, which wow. we never see really ever here. I mean, you've and got they, a couple people we, that have a maybe a maybe, <laughs> yeah, a maybe four or five days collectively this you know in the year yeah and they they and it, it's almost what we can and it's not i hate to say we can almost predict it but we can literally almost predict it when you have an upwelling come crashing in um, and you get maybe some blue water with it it is very very consistent that they're going to have a great bite um on the flip side, if they have a bad downwelling right off their coast, it's a, it's a, it's not, they'll, they'll say, we don't even go wide. We, we just fish the inshore when we know we've got uh, a bad downwelling offshore because it's just, it doesn't work. It's just not for them. So uh -huh. we've noticed things like that and they've kind of uh, learned it along with us to know that that's how that fishery works. What's interesting is we don't see a lot. I mean, altimetry works and, and the, 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 marine biology and the and the science of it i mean it works everywhere in the world the same way it works there but it's just not as strong of a of a data set i mean i'm gonna say you know off the coast of, of florida you know let's say off the east coast of florida altimetry is really not going to play a, a major mm -hmm. role there partly because you don't have a lot of big deep water right um it's just a straight there and it's just getting it's funneled just a anyway straight. and so yeah. some of that um you kind of observe and you know the, the science and the marine biology of altimetry we we know it we read it and we we kind of believe it but it is definitely a stronger um piece of data in other in other fisheries you know and just just it could just be the way that ocean mechanics work right that, that's very you know, interesting though i mean especially for like so. an sst nerd like me it's like that's yeah makes me want to like okay now should i be paying attention to should I be looking at altimetry shots and keeping data on my altimetry shots as well like okay this eddy was good what was the altimetry of it you know yeah and you know another one is salinity you know some people are real strong believers in salinity um it, it it's worth noting I had a good trip what what were all the factors there what were they right and you have a couple of good trips and kind of compare them a little uh -huh. bit and what's similar what's what's constant you know it, it could be a another data set that helps you um, in the future. Yeah. Yeah, that's, I agree with that. Yeah. As much, awesome. Like you said, as many data sets that you can apply in the past. I mean, fish are – like me and Taylor say this all the time, even inshore. Fish are creatures of habit. What they did the year before, they're probably going to do this year, you know, so. And – Another broad question, I'm pretty sure I know the answer, but just to ask again, once you have rip charts like I do, you can pull up like pretty much any section of water or body of water, right? Like no, well, just, Atlantic. it's just by, it's by region. 
So like you, you buy each region if you want to add regions. It's I think it's cost less, right, Chris, per region. Yeah, it's just it's a it's a twenty dollar add on. Yeah. Um, if you wanted to add another, you know, goal for east east coast or so like when I go down to Florida, awesome. I would add yeah. I add on. Yeah, know. that's what I was curious. Basically, is like you know I I have the Mid Atlantic shot that we use here. But that's exactly what I was thinking. Yeah. If you went to Florida or even the guys that run to Costa Rica or Mexico or, you know, is that another? But uh, you just answered, so you can just add it on, and that's that's awesome. Is there any areas you guys aren't covering you're think, covering, are you thinking about getting into? Or, I mean, I, I, I know I'm pretty familiar. You guys cover a lot of lot of area, but. Yeah, we cover we cover all of the major fisheries. Um, you know, it's uh, there, there's probably a few um, – Few areas that are that are probably on on, on the list, uh -huh. but uh, but for the most part, most major fisheries are covered. Yeah, what so what's awesome. like? Uh, I mean, I guess what's the most in interesting thing in the sixteen years that you've seen as far as like an anomaly or is or it a wild story someone yeah. told you or maybe you? Man, did. that's a good question. Um, you know, you'll see things that are, that are typically kind of anomalies, kind of like an algal bloom. You know, those those aren't predict those aren't real common, but you'll see them. And you know, we've heard it can kind of shut down fishing, things like that. Okay. Um, you know, floods. I mean, I, I mean, I love maps. I love the data. Me too. You know, when, when let's say um, in the U.S., you know, Mississippi River floods, we'll see dirty water push out, you know, 60, oh, wow. 70 miles. And that's, that is kind of insane after, after a major flood. And so things like that are really kind of intriguing. They're definitely anomalies. Um, and it's interesting to kind of see, well, how does, how does it recover? If it recovered, how long, you know, just to kind of watch it play out is a, I, I, I that stuff kind of gets me excited. To I watch actually and, watched, I've seen pictures down in the, uh, the Gulf of like when the, when the, you guys, when all that water, you got a good shot down there and all that water drains out to the Gulf and it, talk about a break. I mean, wow, like that, it gives, it, I mean, that's when they, everybody sees, sees those pictures on Facebook. It's like, this is when two oceans collide. It's actually the Mississippi and the Gulf of Mexico, nine <laughs> times out of 10, and you see those pictures. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. But yeah, I appreciate your time. And I mean, if, do you have anything else? I mean, I, like I said, we're just going to probably snip in some pictures that I have in the past from the past at the end, Chris. I mean, obviously we don't need you for that, but yeah, well, we'll just, you know, Jeff will just explain how he used, he sent me the shots of the chart he was using and then the fish they caught, yeah. and you can kind of give a rundown right. of that. Right, yeah, no problem. But um, I really appreciate it. That'll be, that'll be golden for, for your viewers to watch Jeff's analysis <laughs> on that because I've, I've learned a lot from him. He's a great fisherman knows Thank how you. to read data and i love it when we collaborate i do um, too yeah i'm sure the few i can't wait to see what the future holds i'm, I'm sure we're going to be more more sure we're going to be doing more collaboration so yeah and i know i learned a lot today and again I, I thank you and appreciate you giving us your time and also for the code you gave us if you guys are interested in getting this app always bent fishing oc oh, yeah. yes. get a 15 dollars discount that. sign up on the website and then once you're signed up you can open the app and use the app and uh, yeah, we appreciate it, and that was awesome. I, le I learned a lot, <laughs> and hopefully our appreciate viewers. You guys. Yeah, thanks. So, thanks so much, Chris, and I'll be talking to you soon, man. Sounds good. Good luck this season. Thank you. See you. Thanks. Later. See you. Bye. All right, guys, so that was awesome. We had so much fun talking with Chris, and don't forget, you know, if you like this video, subscribe. But Jeff's gonna run over those shots we were just talking about with Chris right now. So, uh, yeah, I just wanted to go over a couple shots that um, stood out to me when I was just reviewing, like, kind of, Taylor keeps a way more <laughs> detailed logbook than I do, and I'm getting better with that, but this is kind of my logbook right now, unfortunately. Um, so, uh, we're going to dive right into it. So, so this, this was from 2016, this image, um, April. Oh, no, I'm sorry. May of 2021. This is May of 2021. Was it say at the bottom? Yeah, May. May of 2021. Um, this was first trip of the year that year. And we had been watching this eddy develop um, for probably a week, week and a half. And um, it finally got it within range, like where, where the water had pushed over um, to, to, you know, close to the continental shelf. Sorry, we're burning the midnight oil here at uh, <laughs> Always Bent. And it's, you can use. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to. I was, that's what I was about to say. Yeah. So so if you guys can see, like, we ran 
we ran directly between the the to the between the poor man's, which is right here, and the Baltimore, which is right here. We I set my GPS right for the middle, and I was looking for this edge. Well, the night before, that edge had pushed off the canyon wall. It was closer on the edge right here, and it pushed off. So we were, you know, searching for the water a little longer that day. But once we found it, if you can go to the next clip here. Mm -hmm. Um, you guys can see, I mean, it's, it's, it's harder to, it's, it's hard to see, but maybe, uh, I can get Taylor to zoom in here a little bit. Um, yeah, I can. Let me hold on. And it, it almost looks like the Gulf Stream button up against, you can see that you know, line North right Carolina there. right there. And we went, so we went across that line and it was about a 10 degree temperature break. And every rod went down with blue fins immediately. We had like eight or nine rods out and every single one of them had blue fin on it. And we ran that we ran that break a couple times, and it was just like that every single time we went across it. I mean, the bluefin were absolutely stacked up in there. I mean, you would have had a field day, dude. It was like light tackle, like they were just cruising on the surface, like sunbathing on the awesome. surface. And uh, we were all by ourselves. I mean, I told my friends the next when we got in, we were the first bluefin that year, or the yeah, we were the first bluefin. When it was the elephant actually caught prior. But we were the first bluefin, and I told all my buddies, I'm like, dude, it's 500 fathoms between the Baltimore and the Norfolk. And Remo actually went out the next day and, and got a big eye in that water, and a couple more were actually caught as well. Wow. So the big eyes were actually mixed in with the bluefin. Um, if you go to the next picture, it just shows you, you know, that oh, they yeah. were basically schooly bluefins, like so 40, 50 been, pounders. Wow, yeah, that would have been so fun on some, like, lighter tag or spinning gear. Oh, my gosh, dude. Wow. I mean, and if I had, I was on well, my buddy's boat, but, like, if it were my boat, I you know you yeah. know we would have had the the right tackle, but oh, that yeah. that would have been a blast. But that was just that one awesome, example, though. one small example. So basically, just following that water prior to your you know when you guys want to go fishing. Um, this is actually like one of my favorite breaks of all time I've ever fished in our city, and I've probably been fishing down here for like fifteen years or so now. And this is more one of the more memorable ones for me. Um, it was Memorial Day weekend, 2016, and the the Gulf Stream basically, you know, made a little bubble, you know, filament break off. At, but basically, we were fishing. I mean, you guys can see right here. Like, this is the Washington, and this is the Norfolk right here. I mean, we were fishing a 15 degree edge there, so you would wow. you would come across the set. I mean, this was such an easy edge to find. Um, go to the next picture. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can see here this is prior to it pushing up on the shelf but you can see the chlorophyll here the green to blue i mean when you see that in ocean city anything even close to that and that's what that other picture was that line that we showed yeah, right right that's the green to blue yeah and when you and when you see those green to blue edges like that even if it's subtle if you think you see something a lot of times i will think i see something and go over to troll it and i'll fish it you you'll find a an edge or a convergence of water um and again this is one of the tools on rip charts it's a layer you can add for the right correct for yes the chlorophyll. well you it's just or, a whole separate map but it's a, whole, a it's, it's a huge but you can overlay um, that yes, map on yes, top of the temperature which i highly recommend the, like all, see see where the warm water is associated with the blue water you know that that's what i look for that leading boundary of blue water so to speak mm -hmm. so if you go to the next one same same image it just shows you really how we were coming from Indian River, unfortunately. That's why I have that arrow in the top left mm. corner. Um, a lot of boats from Ocean City, actually all the boats from Ocean City at that time were fishing the Norfolk. But it was limits of tuna for weeks. I mean, a couple weeks in a row it was lights out yellowfin fishing. Um, wow. I mean, as, as many awesome. as you want, as many people as you had on the boat, you could catch that you know that many tuna. So So look for these. First eddies of the year, not the first ones, but you know the first eddies that's holding, let's say seventy degree water. You see that eddy, and it's you know around the end of middle May towards beginning of June. You know it's worth taking a run and, and going out there. A lot of times you'll have a, a really good trip. You know sometimes obviously it's a little slower fishing, but if you're seeing you know the yellowfin fishing generally slows up to the south, you'll see like North Carolina boats reporting, oh yellowfin fishing's gotten really sporadic. When you see that and then you see this has popped up, I mean, it's time to go. Yeah, and you can see, too, 
you know, how these each one of these shots look a little different. This one, you know, you have that, you narrowed that temperature. Uh, well, no, down that, that's why this is or... such a crazy eddy. I didn't even narrow the temperature down. Like, well, that is the, I was going to ask you, because it looks like it goes from, it must have been like 70 to Dude, it was, went from 74, to, it went from 58 degrees to 74 degrees wow. instantly. Wow. Instantly. Yeah, and look how thin that little yellow section is. Yeah, oh, I know. So it's just red to It was to green. instant, instant. And that's not chlorophyll is what I was getting at, is that's temperature difference. No, but if you look back to the prior picture, I don't know how easy that is. If you can get right. back to the other one, the blue is associated with the orange on this. And right. like that's what you want to see when you see the warm water associated with the blue water. You see you see a warm water eddy, it, you still have to see, if, especially this time of year, you still have to make sure that the chlorophyll is good. A lot of times I've had this happen to me plenty of times where I go out there and you're like, oh, this eddy looks great. It's a big break and you get out there and it's a terrible upwelling that pushed you know pushed a bunch of dirty water offshore that's water warmer and and those are no good you're not going to catch pelagics aren't going to hang out in that but in this particular case oh you my did god pretty good huh? it was lights mm -hmm. out fishing for weeks i mean it was it was such good fishing i mean the water was so blue i mean it, I, I think we had like 18 or 20 tunas that day i mean and we yeah. could have kept catching them that's awesome but it was uh a lot of fun and there's my <clears throat> excuse me mahis and big eyes mixed in and white marlins if you're all the white marlin fishermen out there <laughs> there were some whites in there uh that was this so this, this image is um another this is april actually this is one of the this is the earliest bluefin i've ever gotten out of ocean city um i was studying rip charts as i do this time of year i don't know what happened to our video oh. there but is it oh, there we go that's good um I was studying rip charts and this was the second trip. The first trip, the the water, if you go to the next picture, mm -hmm. the first trip did, now this is a, a, a SST image. The prior is a chlorophyll, but you can see like this was just a couple days prior and the water was much more put together. You know, you could see distinct blue, orange, like the orange I associate the Gulf Stream with, the blue you associate the Labrador current with. That the orange was pretty blue the the blue the the blue on this if you show this crowd the blue right there yeah that was all dirty water but if you go back to, if, if if can you go back to that last shot I'm sorry yeah just one second here if you so we you go back to that last shot that's the that's a chlorophyll shot and that was two days later and Josh and I jo Josh knew I caught that bluefin with Joseph the the day before. He's like, dude, let's go. Let's go again. I'm like, I don't know if the water's, you know, the, so we, anyways, long story short, we. Was this it? No, it was the uh, one right before that. It should be right there. No, no, other way, down the bottom. That right there, perfect. Yep. This was two days later, April 22nd. So we got out there. Restless Lady was the only, Restless Lady actually went out too because they knew we caught that bluefin a couple days earlier. Mm -hmm. They went out there and nobody, we, we were out there all day. We found 50 some degree water, green, nothing good. They hadn't found anything. And like right before we were about to give up, Josh pulled up his, uh, he had a, uh, what's it called? Sirius satellite, which is awesome. The SST service, which shows you very blended shots of uh, composite shots. But either way, we pulled it up because it's a Hail Mary at this point, you're out there. And it's like showing the water being like four miles away from us. We're like, okay, we're we're close. Like we might as well go out there and try to hit mm -hmm. it. So it was like four miles to the northeast. We went out there and we could see a big fog bank. Like you, you know, a lot of this time of year, like or any time of year, you see fog on the water. You know, you and you're looking for a break or a rip. Like go investigate that fog if it's in the direction or like the mm -hmm. city that you're looking. But either way, we see this huge fog bank and. And everything else is clear. You know, you're looking left, right, behind you. Everything's clear. You know, you could see miles, but you couldn't see anything in this spot. So we were just cruising up on it. The water just starts climbing, climbing, climbing. It got up to 62 degrees from 55. And I was like, I slowed the boat down. I'm like, all right, dump it. We dumped the long line out. And we're, Josh and I are just, after we put two other lines out. We're just sitting there watching the, the depth finder. And it's gone from... 60 62 63 and we're just watching it go up and it went up to 66 or 67 degrees and it's i remember as soon as it hit 66 degrees that long line up top went off and it was a 133 pounder 
And I'll never forget the guy yeah, I went, you know, awesome. Crazy Joseph. I the lost mm-hmm. us the bluefin this year. Mm-hmm. Um, he, he, um, I lost my train of thought with Joseph, but either <laughs> way, because he, he, he's that crazy of a guy. But we, we caught, the, what happened was we, Joseph and I caught that bluefin April 20th or 19th. And we were going to get coastal fishermen front page ever, you know, it was the talk. And then Josh and I went out two days later, caught a bluefin twice the size out of Ocean City, furthermore, because the first one was out of Delaware. So it got a lot more play. And he's like forever mad at me because we took the front page of Coastal Fisherman yeah, with that second with tuna. That one. Yeah. Right. But it was uh it was a it was a the second trip with Josh was a was a stupid run. I mean, looking back, like I I mean, I don't know, I probably would have done it now. But Yeah. I mean it paid off. I mean it so. paid off, but it doesn't always. I mean, look at us. I mean yeah. you've you've been out there yeah. and it doesn't pay off Had all the plenty time. Plenty of skunked trips and so, plenty but, of fun ones that right. turn out great too. It a lot just, of a lot of times it pays off, but a lot of times it doesn't. So I mean it's 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 all ultimately you're like everybody, we always tell everybody, like you're not gonna catch them from the couch or you're not gonna yeah. catch them not fishing. You never so. know unless you go. Right. Mm-hmm. So, so. Yeah, I mean that's yeah. that's basically. I mean, I, there's if and if you guys have any other questions or anything, hit up yeah, hit up stuff. Write them in the comments. Yeah, write them in the comments. And we'd uh, love to answer them. I'd love to get ideas from you guys. If you guys have any ideas about what other things you'd like to hear about offshore that yeah. I could possibly help with or steer you in the right direction, I'd love to do that. Yeah, and hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I know for me it was awesome. Like, I mean. Jeff showed me this app, like I said, the last winter when we were out there chasing bluefin, and I've messed with it quite a bit and, uh, you know, figured a little bit out, but not nearly like everything he was telling us right. about and you were right. talking about. So I mean, yeah, I'm excited okay. to mess with it more as we get into this summer season and the actual offshore fishery is going to fire up. And now right. I know I, mean, I, I literally like, just learned what to look for. You know what right. I mean? And I mean, so you and I, you guys did too. You and I like will be using that app. I mean, I'm going to, there's so many usages for that app other than just offshore. I mean, I know, like, I wouldn't buy it if you were just fishing ponds or lakes. But if you're, you know, fishing in the ocean and you're fit, the fish that you love to target are water temperature-based fish. You know, like, they're not resident fish. They're migratory fish. They're moving to water conditions. They're summering. They're wintering. Like, then I, it's a great app. I mean, this yeah. is for targeting migratory fish. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it and learned something like I did. And uh, like the video, subscribe, share it with your friends. Yes, Leave please. us a comment down below. We still have the giveaway going on. Um, well, actually, by the time this comes out, we just announced the winner yesterday. So okay. either way, we appreciate all the support, guys. And hopefully you enjoyed the video. Thank you guys we'll so much. We'll see you next time. See ya.